swimming in the ocean and suddenly you feel something slimy floating across your foot? At first, you think it's a fish, but then you notice it's green. Chances are you just ran into some seagrass. What's seagrass, you ask? That's a good question. Let's talk about it. I'm Dr. Nikki, and today we're talking about seagrass. Get excited. Seagrass is a plant that can survive in the ocean. And that's a really big deal because not a lot of plants can do that. In fact, seagrass is kind of one of the only ones that can. Why? Don't worry, we'll get there. First, we gotta figure out why seagrass is even called seagrass. Do you have any guesses? Take a look at the picture. Why do you think seagrass is called seagrass? Do you have a guess? Good. The thing is, seagrass is called seagrass because it looks like grass, right? The same stuff that you might find outside your home or your school. It kind of just looks like underwater versions of that. So that's where it gets its name. And like that grass or trees or all other plants, it has three main parts. Do you know the three main parts of a plant? Well, it has its roots that go underground. It has its stem that helps it stand up and it has its leaves, which helps it get oxygen. And that kind of makes sense with a tree, right? We can see the stem, which is the trunk of the tree, the leaves all over and the roots that go deep underground. But it's not quite as obvious with seagrass, but it still has the three main parts. Let's take a look. So the seagrass that we really look at, what we see when we're swimming in the ocean or looking at a picture, that's really just the leaves of the plant. It has a stem too, but it's super teeny tiny and has a special name, a rhizome. It also has roots, but instead of going into dirt the way that a tree does, it just goes under the sand. Seagrass also have one more thing that not all plants have though. It has flowers. I know. Now granted, it doesn't have flowers all year long, but like a lot of other plants that you might see outside your front door, it does get flowers sometimes. Pretty cool, huh? Now, like I said, seagrass is really one of the only plants that can live in the ocean. And if it's gonna live there, it needs to make sure that it can get everything it needs to survive. And like all plants, it needs four things to survive. Let's think about that. What could a plant need to survive? Hmm. Well, it needs air, right? But what is air? Well, air is made up of different gases and most plants get that air through these little holes that they have in their leaves that are so small. You can't even see them with your eye. You can only see it under a microscope. And those little holes are called stomata. And that's what lets the air in and out of the plant. At least when it's above ground. Plants that are underwater, you know, seagrasses, they can't have that stomata because they would just fill up with water. So instead, they have a really thin outer layer on their leaves. And that thin outer layer helps the gases get into the plant. Plants need something else too. They need light. So when the sun's rays are shining, that helps all the plants on earth. How does seagrass get light? The truth is they get it the exact same way that plants that live on land do. It's just, they have to wait for the sun's rays to kind of get through the water. And they can in some areas. Because of that, you're only gonna find seagrass in the ocean where there's enough light. You won't find them deep, deep, deep down at all. Okay. Air, light, what else does a plant need? It needs water. Now, most plants just wait for it to rain or if it's a plant inside your home, you just kind of water it once a day, if you remember. But how do plants that are already in the water get water? Are they just like good? Pretty much, yeah. I mean, the thing is though, the ocean's pretty salty, right? Seriously, it's, it's very salty. If you're ever in the ocean, 
don't drink the water because it's salty. But with our seagrass in particular, they figured out how to make sure that that salt doesn't get into them. So that's how they get water. So they've got air, light, water. What's the last thing they need? They need nutrients. But wait, what are nutrients? Well, basically, nutrients are things that we need in order to grow and live and do all the things that we do. Think about it this way. Maybe your parent makes you drink milk every morning. My mom certainly did growing up. And did she ever tell you the milk was so that you could grow big and strong? That's true, because milk has calcium, which helps our bones grow really strong. They need it to grow just like we need calcium. But how do they get it? Because, you know, they don't have a mouth like us where they can just drink the milk or eat it with their cereal. That's where that thin layer on them comes back into play, like I told you about earlier. They get its nutrients that way too. Now, this is also different than plants that you're gonna find on land. The trees that are outside your front door, a lot of the way they get nutrients is from their roots because the dirt is so full of nutrients that they can just get it all up. But sand or seagrasses, it doesn't really have a lot of nutrients. So they figured out how to live. So where can you find seagrass? Well, we've already talked about that a little bit, right? It's in the ocean. And we also talked about how it's in the areas where there's enough light. Other than that, you can really find it in a lot of the ocean. You can find seagrass in the cold, cold waters of Alaska and in the tropical, warm, sunny waters of Florida. Why? Because seagrass has been able to adapt to live in a lot of different areas. But what does adapt mean? Have you ever heard of that word? Adapt is the verb for the word adaptation, which is the noun. And adaptation is any skill or feature that a living thing has developed in order to survive in a specific place. Think about it this way. You and I, we don't have wings, right? We are firmly planted on the land. But birds, they got those wings and those wings allow them to fly. That's an adaptation, they have wings. And just like birds have adapted with wings in order to fly, seagrasses have been able to adapt to live in the salty ocean. Remember how we talked about that thin outer layer of the seagrass? That's another example of an adaptation. And this allows the seagrass to live in so many different parts of the ocean. In fact, the ocean has a ton of seagrass. Like seriously, a lot. And in some places, there is so much seagrass. It's a place called a seagrass meadow. You can see it from outer space. Yeah, you can see seagrass from outer space. How cool is that? So next time you're in the ocean and something kind of slimy slides by your foot, if it's just seagrass, don't worry, it's everywhere and it's actually pretty cool.